Non-opioid pain management therapies are important strategies to limit the potential for drug diversion from veterinary prescriptions. The role of anxiety in the cycle of pain should not be underestimated. Mitigating anxiety in the hospital and at home can go a long way toward decreasing pain. Environmental enrichment, appropriate exercise, music or pheromone therapy, especially in cats, and padded bedding all enhance the quality of life for the pet. For particularly anxious pets, anti-anxiety medications such as trazodone may be indicated. Home massage, healthy diets, and TLC can all be helpful. Non-opioid outpatient options include local anesthetics, which inhibit nerve conduction through sodium channel blockade. These are very effective forms of pain management as they prevent the pain signal from reaching the spinal cord or the brain. They also have major opioid sparing effects. There are two options for outpatient local anesthetic use. Noceta is an extended release liposomal bupivacaine suspension that can provide up to 72 hours of analgesia. It has been approved for postoperative pain in dogs after some surgical procedures. Additional research is ongoing. Another option is a lidocaine patch. Studies have demonstrated safety but the analgesic efficacy is still up for debate. NSAIDs block the COX enzyme to decrease production of pro-inflammatory mediators, which leads to decreased pain. Side effects associated with NSAID use include risks of renal and hepatic damage and gastrointestinal bleeding and ulceration. There are NSAIDs that have been approved for both dogs and cats. The ideal use is for short-term anti-inflammatory from mild pain or as additional support to augment other analgesia. Amantadine is an oral form of ketamine. Like ketamine, it blocks NMDA receptors, so it prevents wind-up or pain escalation. It is essentially acting dissociative with mild analgesia effects. Amantadine does not seem to have the same abuse potential in humans as ketamine. Gabapentin is a GABA analog, and the mechanism of action, while not entirely clear, may be through blockade of calcium-dependent channels. Calcium influx is needed for the release of neurotransmitters, especially excitatory amino acids. The blockade may suppress stimulated neurons involved in seizure and pain. Frequent dosing is needed due to a short half-life in dogs and cats. Other non-pharmaceutical options that should be considered in appropriate situations include hydrotherapy, cold laser therapy, acupuncture, and rehabilitation programs. Other options that appear promising and that we hope to see more research on in animals include turmeric. Numerous studies have documented its anti-inflammatory effect as well as this wide safety profile in laboratory animals and humans. Cannabidiol was recently found to be safe and effective for specific conditions in dogs by researchers at Cornell University and Colorado State University. Colorado researchers are currently evaluating the drug in cats with pain and in dogs with epilepsy. Recently, the FDA reiterated that it is still considered illegal to sell cannabidiol in supplements or food. Veterinarians should remain up to date as the laws may change. Opioids administered in a veterinary hospital are, are valuable to manage pain, but veterinarians should be sure to consider alternative options before prescribing opioids for outpatient management.